<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Up and Namaste. We give them a little bit more time to join. We are a bit early today. Good evening, Sumi. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm absolutely fine, thank you. Are you enjoying the lockdown over the weekend? Uh, <laughs> No, no, not really. We, <laughs> I'm just trying to take off from the hospital. Lots of patients are coming up. Hospital. Oh my God! Yeah, that can be difficult when you have patients and you have to take it's care all, of them. Ward well. is totally full, and uh, I myself being a stomatic little high risk category, so I'm just thinking yeah. take off, <laughs> off from the hospital. True, <laughs> true. Yeah. Let's That's see. for everybody else. So, so we have to wait. Mm. True. So. Atmanaste, Rafa. But thanks for all this, you know, it takes you away from all the Corona, Agri, yeah, Goa. Yeah, another place, right? That's the, <laughs> that's the thing, books. It takes you away, okay. Today, I think nice. we're talking about fairies and gnomes and brownies. <laughs> no, there were brownies that you could... Uh, look at. <laughs> look at instead of eating. And not eat. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not waiting for the patients in the outdoor. I'm waiting for your session on alternate day and when you're reading the books and I'm like in a different world, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, as long as we can do that, I yeah. think another month of this and then we take a break for the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. But I'm sure there are other sessions, so you should be able to join someone. Yes, else. yes, definitely. So it would be uh, equally interesting to shift. Okay. All right, so um, let's invoke. I think it's uh, almost two minutes since we've begun. So let me just start going live. Hold on. Okay, we've gone live. Let's close our eyes, connect them to the palate. Inhale and exhale, relax the body. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, we love Mahakavu To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus. Especially to the angels, the beings of communication, our respective Wi Fi's and the internet. We especially ask for the great teachers and the masters of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, light, and wisdom. Help us, enlighten us all through the session with greater clarity and deeper understanding. Allow us to have the ability to assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better divine instruments to do your work. Let thy will be done, not the urges of our own nature. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atma Namaste, everybody. Atma Namaste. Welcome to part two of chapter 22. <laughs> there was another way to say that right now. Anyways, so uh, let's go ahead. Yeah. And um, we go on to uh, the aspect of clairvoyance and further see how that clairvoyant ability helps you and I to further have a, a greater understanding of what actually happens when uh, you're able to see, yeah? So that's basically what we're gonna look at today. So when you get clairvoyant and this ability to see sight, we're talking about basically etheric clairvoyance, yeah? Nothing else at this point. So hopefully we'll cover most of it today. So when you're able to see uh, through your eyes, the etheric world around you, the earth by itself becomes almost transparent. Yes, and in the sense that you are able to see into the earth uh, to a certain depth. And so the comparison here is when you look at the ground, yes, where there is a, a lake or, or a pond and the water is still and clean, you can actually see the earth below, right, the ground below. And similarly, it's almost like that with your clairvoyant vision, where you are able to see to a certain depth into the earth, Right, and therefore you are able to see many things. So, what do they say here? You are able to see uh, the veins of coal, metal, right? And uh, this is not too far away from the surface. The medium through which we are looking is thus not 
perfectly transparent, right? So it's not super transparent, but it, it gives you the ability to look further down into Mother Earth and see what else is there. Now, this is with reference to the Earth. So the Earth becomes transparent to a, uh, to a, to a large degree for you to be able to see under. Now, I'm not too sure if this is how some of them, if they can actually see to a certain depth, are able to tell you that there is actually a water body there and you can actually dig a well, which means it then allows you uh, to, to avoid digging in several places to bring water up to the surface. Anyways, that could be one. Uh, there might be other ways in which they do this. Could be the, also the energy in the water, the break in energy. Yeah. Because the stick, even the stick technique, the stick can't be clairvoyant, right? No, I'm talking about the person who uses their sight to see. Is there, is there people like that? I've heard of them using coconut sticks. Coconuts and sticks. You know, yeah. they use uh, devices. Yeah, I've probably. I've heard of people seeing more. All right. Uh, so, Master, I remember, told us that there is water here. He says it's there. You need to just find it. <laughs> right? But at that point, he didn't tell us where exactly. So, we had to find people who came literally, like he said, with a stick to try and find the water for us. Going ahead. Now, the other way in which you can actually do this is while looking at the body, physical body or the dense body of your patients. When you look at the physical body or the dense body of the patients, you can actually look into it. And so they say that you can actually see the internal organs, right? And how the body is. At the same time, if you're used to, for example, healing and you know something about diseased energy or dirty energy, you're able to see which organ is more affected or which area of the body is more affected. Yes. And so you can actually make a diagnosis based on that. And so people who are healing on a regular basis, this faculty sometimes slowly starts to get activated and they're able to see layer by layer, not like full. Right. Remember, we say it, it kind of opens up slowly uh, and to be able to have perfect clairvoyance is a different thing. So by the time you get perfect clairvoyance, you can actually see into the organ and into probably uh, the, the inside of the organ the almost fourth dimension. But initially, it's just that you can see the whole thing. It becomes like the outside becomes transparent and you can see inside the physical body. Now, etheric sight makes visible many entities as well. Yes, and so we're going to look at that. So you're, you're able to see what you call the lower order of the nature spirits. Now, these nature spirits, because you can see them, remember your sight is etheric. And so these etheric beings that exist Yes, in, in that kingdom, the lowest of them, you can start seeing. And so they say um, there, there are what you call uh, various kinds. So there are categories. And in that categories, there are also hierarchy. So it goes up and down. So this is where uh, Anath was mentioning. You can see fairies. You can see norms. You can see brownies. And um, those of you who went through school, um, especially if you went through the English medium, right, which was either British or whatever, you'll notice that some of the stories you remember then is actually part of this because a lot of these stories that came from uh, basically the, the uh, UK side, the British side, uh, they actually were able to see a lot of these. So Scotland, Ireland, you'll find that if you have stories from that in your childhood when you went through school, you'll, re you'll remember goblins and you'll remember all these things, which were part of stories that were said in those days. Today, I don't think there are so many not in main, uh, main school stream um, stories. So going ahead. And so um, if you look at it, the, the so-called fairies that we talk about, there, there are, uh, again, a variation. And so they say uh, there is a class of beautiful fairies, yes, that live above the ground. So there are those, like we said, because you can see down into the earth, there are beings that are below the earth. But these fairies are usually more, uh, the ones we are referring to, is more on the surface. Coco mm. film. Yeah, the, the animation. The animation, all right. So uh, moving on. And so they say that uh, there is a ladder of evolution even with them. So uh, starting from the, the little fairies of the grasses, cereal is basically your danas, right? So whether it's rice or not wheat. Kellogg's. Yeah, rice or wheat, no, not grains. Kellogg's. It's a joke. Okay, fine. I got your joke. Okay. It's not Kellogg's, okay? <laughs> Cocoa Pops. All right. Not Cocoa Pops that my son loves so much. All right. Yes, or the bees or the beings associated with ants. Uh, these are there. They are uh, tiny ones. Uh, so they start off at that level, right? At, at the lowest level being associated with all these uh, natural, uh, natural 
about uh, plants and tiny, tiny insects. And then they say after their time uh, as etheric fairies, they become uh, salam salamanders. salamanders, which are basically like lizard creatures with short legs that move around. So they evolve into that kind of level and then into fire beings, right? Or fire spirits. Uh, then uh, the, how do you say that? Sylphs? Sylphs. Yeah, sylphs, right? And then air spirits. So they have their own way of evolving literally from the earth, which is where the grass and the, uh, the grains grow and then moving up into fire spirits and then into air. And later, they pass into the kingdom of the angels, right? So that's why sometimes we refer very loosely that the nature spirits is like the lower level of the angelic hierarchy. So moving on then, as they evolve, after getting into being air spirits, they move into the aspect of becoming angels. Again, mm -hmm. evolving from a certain degree. You want me to stop? Yeah, because then you want to go into the text. Okay. I should relax. relax. Okay. Um, so the first paragraph, when the faculty is perfectly developed, um, it is completely. So what happens when the faculty is developed? It's completely under your control and may be used or not used at will. Again, will is intention here, not, you know, will. And uh, it's, said to be easy to change from ordinary to etheric vision as to alter the focus of the eye. So, so that is, uh, now if this, if I had done my PowerPoint, I would, this is where I would be sharing the screen, and showing you quotes of Master Chua, but however, yeah, I have the book here, as you can see, luckily Sumi has kept it here because she had an interview and I found it here. So I opened the page because we all know this book back and forth, right? So it says here on page 21, what edition is this? It might be just one of the earliest. Yeah, the 2000 editions. What's <laughs> the first Indian one? Only. This is my latest book because my earlier book, the earlier one that we had it's four was four. only this thick. It was a pink book which I did not want to buy. This is the second Indian edition. Yeah, right? this is the second one. I liked it because it was thicker with more examples. Mm. Testimonial that. So it says the difference between a clairvoyant and a crazy person or someone who's hallucinating, um, is that with the clairvoyant, the etheric web or protective web is quite thin and can be easily opened when the clairvoyant faculty is being used and closed when it's not being used. It can be opened and closed subconsciously or intentionally. Uh, in other words, the etheric web is just blah, 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 blah. He has substantial mastery over his emotions. That's not provided. That's very important, especially fear and can see angels, fairies, and negative elementals without becoming psychologically imbalanced. A crazy person, on the other hand, has punctured protective webs, blah, blah, blah. The protective webs are damaged, become open permanently, thereby making him, uh, he is constantly influenced, bothered, or tormented by negative thought entities, negative elementals, or negative disincarnate spirits. He sees ugly and scary things, or hears ugly voices, blah, 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 blah. I don't think Master is blah, 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 blah. No, but he'll understand me. He'll be fine. Uh, uh, so it's not disrespectful, it is, and so on. And so yeah, they have a sense of humor, and so did Master Chow. Yeah, I got the blah 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 from him. So, <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> so basically, that's what they're saying here. Uh, that's what I wanted to bring to your the first three lines. That's what they're trying to say here that you'll be able to have etheric, uh, when you have etheric clairvoyancy, there are different degrees of clairvoyancy. So right now you have physical vision, so you can see solid, liquid, and gas, right? Except for certain gases that come out of your body. I don't know why. Anyway. You can smell it, it's okay. So uh, you can see mostly solid stuff, right? Liquid and gas. Um, but you cannot see uh, etheric matter. Once your etheric faculty is awakened, so it's degree of clairvoyancy, or it's like a range, you know, like a transmitter being opened up more, or the receiver, the range extended, you can see etheric matter, but you can't see emotional matter, you can't see astral matter, you can't see um, uh, mental matter, causal matter, and higher. Then slowly you go to the next phase, next phase, next phase, next phase. But it's not advisable to go to the next phase because that's why he says has substantial mastery over the emotions because the moment you look at something, you feel the emotional energy attached to it. So you will experience that to a certain extent. So that's why you need to be grounded. You can't just see a fairy or an elemental and go crazy and run around, oh my God, you know? Like some people see cockroaches and they go crazy, so. 
imagine if you see elementals a lot of them so all of a sudden right so it has to be in your control and you should have some emotional control now the next paragraph next next few lines is uh, how how do they do it that's the, that's the that's the key it is said to be as easy to change from ordinary to ethereal vision as to alter the focus of the eyes the change being in reality a focusing of consciousness that is the how to do what they're talking about previously now the problem is they have not written how do you alter the focus of the eyes they have not mentioned um, on what do you focus and they've not mentioned um, what have I written here I made a note so they've written you have to alter the focus on the eyes. But number one, they didn't tell you how do you alter the focus of the eyes. What do you mean? And what do you focus the eyes on? You're altering the focus to what? So there are certain secrets that are not revealed. All right? So by doing that, you'll be able to slowly develop, get control over the first one. So that's why you have to read very carefully. Hmm. And what do you focus it on <laughs> when you're training? <laughs> okay, the earth is transparent to ethnic vision to a certain extent. What does that mean, certain extent? Not clarified. Uh, we do not know. Um, but it's sort of implied that a person can see its considerable depth, uh, much as in fairly clear water. That is true. Okay. Now, when they say to a certain extent, because they're giving a range, because it depends on the range of the person's instrument that uh, they're looking at. Some people can see a certain amount. Some people can see much, much more. The range extends based on the person or the clairvoyant. So that's why it's said to a certain extent. Okay. And uh, fairly clear water, that depends. All right. It depends if it's actually clear or if it's, uh, should I say this on recording? Whether it's Maldives water or Bombay water. <laughs> All right, so I'm not saying either one is bad or good. I'm just giving you the idea of uh, it depends on the water. So obviously, if you're in living in a city where there's a lot of uh, psychic pollution, it might not be as clear water as is described here. But if you're in the forest or you're in the mountains where there's less psychic pollution, then it's much more easier to see. A creature burrowing, blah, 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 in the ground can be seen, a medium through which... No, because she's explained this. That's why I'm fast-forwarding. Uh, now, how do they see it? That's not uh, explained, right? They see it. Pro oh. <laughs> I think it's funny. Go ahead. They, it's explained by, you see, if there's metal, it's like an x-ray. It's like there's a break in the energy field. So you, so by looking at the break in the energy field, you get the exact shape of the object, <laughs> right? So it's something like that. And bodies of men and animals are in the main transparent. Uh -huh. Most men, I can guarantee you, are not very transparent. Maybe they're born transparent. They don't stay transparent. Um, we want them to be transparent um, so that the action of the internal organs can be seen to some extent disease may be diagnosed. That is true. So you can to a certain extent diagnose it uh, based on the effect but sometimes the diagnosis is fairly early, sometimes it's fairly late, um, usually fairly early but um, you can zoom in uh, and zoom out with clairvoyance depending on how skilled you are. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, you can zoom into the bone. You can even zoom into the bone marrow. You can even look inside the bone marrow, what's going on in there. Energetically, energetically, right? What type of colors are in there? Etheric stuff is going on out the flow. If there's anything going on there. Anyway. Now, um, etheric sight. In fact, I think in the initial higher clairvoyance class, they would be teaching this, but I think it was so tough. <laughs> People weren't even able to see the big part. So then I think Master Chua uh, stopped doing that. Uh, what? Okay, here. Now, etheric sight. etheric sight makes visible many entities such as lower orders of nature spirits which have etheric bodies. In this case, all this stuff, uh, fairies and all that. When they say lower orders, what do they mean? I do not know, but speculating, you can say that uh, maybe it's not as refined. Not as refined as the other, you know, nature spirits that's why it's a lower order maybe the order of refinement because if you look at the next paragraph there is a class of beautiful fairies i do not know what beautiful is in uh, the author's uh, language it could be different colors so there might be you know a myriad of colors you see when you say beautiful beauty is in the eye of the beholder so you know yeah it is you know sometimes you know 
you think your husband or wife or girlfriend boyfriend is ugly but then you get to know them you sense their energy and all that not 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 you but generally then slowly this person who you would normally not even look at at the street seems to be very beautiful like you know they're nice they're good looking but actually if you saw them before on the street you might not even give them a second look so it changes energy matters uh, there is a class of beautiful fairies with etheric bodies who live on the surface of the earth. This also me is explained. Um, but what is important to see, what I found very interesting, is that the evolution implies again grows to subtle. Now, bear in mind, I'm giving you many hints because we can't go into details of this because the purpose of this is just to see what you can see with it. But you have to see they start from the grass, basically the earth. Then they slowly go to, to the fire. cereals, and then they slowly go to fire, which is more subtle than earth. Then they move to air, which is more subtle than fire. And then they later on pass in the kingdom of the angels, which is probably more subtle than the air. Right? So that is the whole idea, and more than that, we will not talk about. Uh, the forms of fairies and many uh, are many and various, but most frequently human. That's your turn. <laughs> I stopped it. He's and so I didn't right. take that from so. Yeah, fine. So, um, do we become fairies? No, we do not become mm -hmm. fairies at all. Uh, but there is a crisscross between... You can dress up as a fairy on Halloween you know, for your uh, <laughs> partner. Okay, fine. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> so, uh, there is a crisscross at a point uh, where the humans can evolve to a certain degree of evolution. And then you have two choices to continue in the evolution of the human race, or you can also move into the evolution of the angelic hierarchy. So that's much further in, in the human race. So uh, you and I cannot definitely become fairies because they are on the lower rung uh, compared to where you and I are hopefully at this point uh, of evolution. Yes. Uh, also, there is what you call intuitive clairvoyance and there is uh, actual physical clairvoyance where you can actually ethically see with your eyes open. Uh, there are those who, through intuition, uh, which is the higher faculty which comes from the crown, right? So they can use intuition and they can actually gauge what's happening, the color, uh, the quality of energy, what is affected. All this uh, also happens to them on the intuitive level, right? So that's a different level. We're not talking about that in this book, but just since you It depends what you want to see. You can't use a telescope instead of glasses, right? I mean, it depends what you want to see and how far, how deep you want to see it. So if you want to see dirty energy, if you want to see uh, fairies, gnomes, those kind of things, elementals, you use certain frequency of energy, which corresponds to a certain frequency of what a chakra vibrates. Then if you want to see the angelic kingdom and higher vibration and uh, Shaktipat energy and initiation energy, then you use um, um, uh, your chakras, which have higher range and higher frequencies. And so it can pick up and translate into your brain those, those signals. But so, just to clarify, Manjula, um, the point is not to become an angel because I sense that you're thinking that fairy is better than human. Not necessarily. A lot of the fairies and nature spirits might not be as evolved as many, many humans. Yeah. Right? So they're actually not as evolved as you think. It's just as you might see in the next one, most people think they evolve and that's why you have all these blood sacrifice and these kind of things. But they are worshipping elementals. So that's why initially, remember, I spoke about discernment. I said, as they, they talk about that whether the elementals are written by books, depending on who you're channeling, right? So, and uh, to experience clairvoyant, we need to open a bit. Is intuition clairvoyant nature the same? It's, um, it's not. Intuition is knowing without studying. You just know, right? You don't know how you know it, but you just know it. It's direct inner perception. Whereas clairvoyant, there's definitely perception happening. It's like looking. Yeah, and so one of the things that Mascho would say, and probably that's why it wasn't given a lot of significance in India, he says, just because you're clever, it doesn't mean that you're more evolved than the people around. Because, you know, when you start finding people around who can see energy and, and can tell you so many things, you get so excited, like, wow, you know, I can't see that world, and he or she can. You have to be aware that to open the web, as you were saying, uh, as you rightly said, the atomic web or the protective web in pranic healing, you need to be able to open the web at will. Right? You can't keep it open permanently. But also, you can see it from the solar plexus. Right? You can see it through your Agnya Chakra or you can see it through higher chakras. So if a person is going to look at it through your solar plexus chakra, so, sorry, through their solar plexus chakra, you can imagine what they're going to see. 
right? Because the solar plexus is a chakra that's associated with self and there are both negative and positive, so, but it's a low positive as well. So you, you have to really find someone who can use the higher chakras and before they see aura, the chakras have to be really clean because if their aura and chakras are not clean, they're going to see through that, um, that contamination within their own aura or their own weaknesses within their chakras into yours. And so when you do that, it will become difficult, all right? So let me move on. So the forms of the fairies, so the initial ones they're referring to are more or less, they look human-like, but smaller in size, in stature. And they say that uh, they have this ability to extend one part, yeah? Like for example, they could, uh, they talk about here the feature is say for example, a limb, right? They might extend it or exaggerate and extend it uh, to a large extent. The etheric matter being more plastic, right? They are able to mold it purely by their thought. Now, if you look at that, wow, you know, we humans can't do that. But that's one of the one of the faculties they have, just like you and I can speak, their faculty is to extend one part and use it uh, to, to kind of exaggerate a, a particular part of their body, purely through thought. They're able to uh, assume almost any appearance at will, but uh, remember that the form that they do create, yes, will wear off and they get back to their original form sooner or later. Now, when they do create a, a particular form, there has to be a reason behind that, yes? Well, they're not allowed to do this uh, all the time, but for a particular reason and for a particular cause, yes, that is appreciated and accepted. All right. Now, when you look at it, uh, the, in order to take a form, yes, other than their own, the fairy must conceive, uh, just to refer to the previous uh, paragraph, conceive whatever it is that they want to become. They have to conceive it clearly and keep, keep uh, his mind fixed or focused upon it. As soon as his thought wanders off, yes, he again returns to his natural state. So to, to have enough will and to keep that form that they want to create either on themselves or around them, they need to keep their focus really, really one-pointed. Once they wander off, whatever they've created goes, yeah, it's off. Now, the etheric matter um, as such is not as easy uh, to kind of um, instruct to create what you want. It's much more easy to to kind of have the mental matter form what you want in your in your thoughts uh, and they say very easily the astral matter follows right so when you have a thought the form is created really fast and even the astral matter around that is created very fast however they say the etheric matter takes time both to whether it's something to grow right to become bigger or to diminish it takes time and so when you look at what you call an astral uh, self you'll find that it moves from one form to a, another because it's astral, it's not etheric. And so it can move from one form to, a, to another really quickly. However, an etheric fairy, the fairy that we can see with our etheric vision, yes, uh, can also move from one to another. But however, it is not as quick as the astral, uh, as the astral beings. So it does go, it does swell or decrease quickly, but not instantaneously. Whereas the astral uh, self can move from one to another in a flash of a second. Yeah. So remember the astral and the mental is faster, whereas the etheric takes much uh, longer for it to, to be programmed as per your thought or your will to create whatever it is that you want. We're talking about <coughs> the fairies at this point. Yeah. Now to move on, uh, for example, they, they give us an example here of a fairy yeah, uh, to alter their size. So if the fairy is only 12 inches, they can actually extend their body to become six feet tall. That's pretty cool, man. Thank yes. So say, for example, they have to protect the person that is friendly with them. Okay. They can actually take on a form. So if you watch all uh, English movies, <laughs> if you watch all English movies, I'm not sure if, it's, if it was one of the movies that I, I can't remember the name, uh, but it's definitely Irish or one of those Scottish movies. And uh, in the house of this, this elderly people, uh, the fairies are there and they're very friendly with, with this couple. And to protect them, they actually take on a form, right? Form of another person. So they protect the old couple. 
So they can actually go on, but only with a, with a considerable amount of strain. So it's not easy for them, but if they have to do it, they can uh, with a lot of strain and they cannot maintain it for more than a few minutes, right? So they can't stay in that form for hours, for example, not even like 60 minutes probably. Uh, it just says few minutes, but I don't know how much few is. But nevertheless, they have that ability which you and I do not have, yeah? So do you want to continue or shall I continue? Talk about it. Okay, then we'll um, go into the mineral kingdom. Okay. Uh, I always thought clairvoyants are more involved Sorry, souls than uh, others. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, definitely not. Master Cho would give this example um, where uh, there was this farmer and one of uh, the pranic healers met the farmer and the farmer's like, you know, it's very strange. I see when I go around, I see flowers on people. And this guy wasn't even that well educated, wasn't that evolved, but he could see flowers on people. Of course, his brain is interpreted since he's a farmer. He sees the chakras, but he's interpreting the chakras as flowers. Thank God he met uh, one of the pranic healers and not went to someone else and spoke about this. Otherwise, he'd be uh, taken somewhere else. Um, and uh, if you read the book, Origins of Modern Pranic Killing or Hatha Yoga, uh, many times Mang Mike would not know uh, even where things are until Master Chua said, look here, look here, look here, look here, even about the 12th chakra or something like that. And even with the spiritual cord uh, in the Achieving One's book, Master Chua has written that, um, you know, like... Um, if people, you know, if people weren't told, the clear ones weren't told, they might even miss the spiritual cord or the antakarana. Anyway, that just means they have a very sensitive body um, and they're, they're, they're able to sense sensitive. They have chakra conditions, but you can create the same chakra conditions. Um, now, what are we talking about? The etheric matter. The okay, the forms of fairies are many and various, but more frequently, most frequently human in shape, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Sumi has said this. I found the last uh, line of this very, very particular. Um, Nevertheless, they have definite forms of their own, which they wear when they have no special reason for taking another. It led me to think about when are, or what are the special reasons that they need to take different forms and what do they want to do with them? right um so these might be good or these might be bad like that's why you might have certain people saying that oh you know what master choa came to me and told me you are in charge of the work now and you are going to be the king now that may not be an involved fairy that might be a lower evolved but not a fairy or nature uh, spirit doing uh, because not all nature spirits you see even elementals fall fall under that kingdom not all nature spirits are are you know good for you or some are very naughty so you know, it's like kids they're not as evolved, so they're not. They're a little bit naughty, so they'll take forms like, um, like a six foot to Shiva, and come and tell you you are the Messiah. <laughs> so you have to be very careful of these, especially in the astral world where they can change so easily, and where you're already emotional. Okay, so now, etheric matter does not obey the power of matter. They say mental matter changes with thought. Now, in order to take another form than his own, a fairy must conceive on it clearly, fix on his mind, and keep the, uh, in the thought form focused the whole time, and then it breaks, right? Yeah, but there are more powerful ways to keep that thought form. But yeah, if you want it that severe, you can. And I remember, like Sumi was saying, many, many cartoons especially have this, uh, where, um, and um, uh, Star Wars, does they have it? No, they, no. they just do the thing. Just but they change shape, right? Which is there's so many cartoons and movies where they they mold their shape and they pretend to be uh, someone else and then they change the shape. And if you see this movie, uh, this cartoon, I mean, it's a very very abstract cartoon. I didn't get it uh, half of it, but this movie, this cartoon called Spirited Away, uh, they are crossing this bridge into another dimension or into another world, and uh, he's saying, "Stay by me, and the guards won't see you." But if you just go something away from me or break away or say something if you talk or if, if you cough uh it'll break the thought form or something like that or break the thought process and they will be able to see you so he was basically hiding her whole physical not even etheric body with his will or with his uh, intention and he had to keep it um, so game of thrones really yeah they can change form all right interesting um it's good to know people watch game of thrones still um it's over now that movie, yeah. I haven't seen that before. Now, yeah, I didn't even know you started the series. Yeah, I watched a lot. Sri Lanka. Um, 
Go ahead. We do. Okay, yeah. Now about the thoughts affecting the matter, I've put this quote several times where Master Cho in the basic book has said, definitely the mind and basically which is the emotion and the thought affect the molding of, uh, of your etheric body, which in turn affect your physical body, right? Like you have negative thoughts, prolonged stress, prolonged negative thoughts, it affects your etheric body eventually and it affects your physical body, right? But in this case, they're using the thoughts to change their co co configuration of their etheric body, all right? It's just like, you have to remember it's energy, it's moldable and they don't have a physical body, so they don't care what will happen. They can just mold it in however way they want, okay? That's why if you notice that sometimes, uh, okay, later on here, and... Um, one of the streams, okay, that's it, no? And six feet, they can go. So I found it amazing. They can go from 12 inches to six feet. That's really a lot. <laughs> that's not small modification. That's like a big modification. But remember, that's a strain because they, they kind of really expanding themselves. Yeah, so if you were going to a party, you can get all buff, tall, and strong, and then go there. Okay. No? <laughs> Probably. Yeah? yeah. So, um, so when you when you look at clairvoyance, it's just like you so. Know, is that what Cinderella story is all about? The fairy did that. She molded a whole etheric form and kept it in place so that uh, till twelve o'clock. Because uh, that's her limit. After that, I'm sorry, I have to let go of the thought form. Yeah. It's very strange. The pumpkin and the rats yeah. and everything get back to normal. Interesting, no? Yes. Okay. So, Harmony, pranic healing, and train center is really there. Okay. So uh, one of the things for me, uh, you know, it's just like how a baby is able to see. They it's say enough, initially, like, go ahead, go ahead. initially uh, when you have, uh, for example, you have the baby, they say they can only see black and white, right? The baby doesn't even know what depth is. So clairvoyance is like that. So it, it, it's a process of allowing that ability to come across, uh, to be able to see the etheric world around you. It's layer by layer. And so as you start to see initially, it might look, you know, just like two dimensions at the most, maybe not even three dimensions. So uh, to be able to see elementals, um, they need to first of all understand what that is, right? Uh, it's like little kids. They may not know the difference between, uh, you know, a worm on the floor and maybe another toy of theirs, which is also wriggly. So it's similar to that. I feel we are talking to nothing. <laughs> all right. So uh, what? I'm not doing it. Okay. So what are you I'm doing? Not doing it. It's just in the chat. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. So uh, what happens is just like they cannot distinguish, even you and I, if you're clever and if you don't understand what it is, uh, it becomes more difficult uh, to be able to see what it is that one is looking at in the web of a person and the elemental. Now, even in the elemental, remember there are different types of elemental. So how do you know that's not an angry elemental? How do you know it is uh, an elemental associated with an addiction? Uh, maybe uh, alcohol addiction or something else. Yes, so not just to be able to see, but to then be able to categorize, just like we're able to sense different types of energy, healthy energy, unhealthy energy, cancerous energy, yes, we're able to notice the difference. So even with sight, you have to train yourself, yeah? And definitely helpful if you have a teacher uh, or a school that actually helps you uh, work with this and understand what you are actually looking at. So moving on. So now we come to uh, what we call the stream of evolution of life. So after leaving the mineral kingdom, yes, as life evolves, the next life is actually going into the plant kingdom, yeah, or the vegetable kingdom. However, instead of going there, what they do is they assume, because they have etheric bodies, right, they decide to inhibit, uh, sorry, inhabit, not inhibit, inhabit the interiors of the earth. And so go into, uh, for example, rocks that are in the earth. And then as they evolve, they move towards the rocks that are more closer to the surface of the earth. And then as they again develop further, occasionally they say, they're able to detach themselves from the rock and move around for a short period of time. And these are what we call the norms. Yes, so these norms can actually come out and do what they want and go back. And so that's why uh, you hear of stories, especially in the old days when people, miners, would go into... Uh, the mines or go into certain uh, caves that are not inhabited by man, they might actually hear sounds. Yeah, they might actually hear some, some sort of movement. And so this movement is when the 
they they can actually see right either the uh, the uh, norm actually comes out of the rock and is actually visible etherically and of course or the person who's walked in into the cave or into the mine is actually at that point having clairvoyant vision and is able to then see uh, the norm that is actually standing in front of them right so this has happened and uh, so there are stories and there are people who've mentioned this in, in days that have gone by and so to move on uh, they say that they they would be seen more frequently than they are right now uh, purely because um, there is a there is a rooted objection to the proximity with the human beings uh, which they share with all but the lowest uh, types of nature spirits yes uh, now you got to understand that they are also evolving they are trying to evolve and they i guess the way we are treating uh, stones today i don't think most of them want to even be anywhere close to humans anyways let's move on to the nature spirit now so some of the lower types of etheric nature spirits are not pleasing yes to the uh, etheric eye if i can put it that way aesthetic sense yes because if you look at it they they are uh, huge uh, they are shapeless and they have a red mouth and here they give gaping us a, mouth sorry uh, gaping mouth and what they're talking about is these are the beings that are associated with uh, emanations of blood and decaying flesh so probably seen at graveyards uh, probably i don't know maybe seen at crime scenes i don't know um so during wars and stuff yes yeah, so the field of you know bloodshed uh, they are definitely going to be around there so these uh rapacious red brown uh crustacean creatures and anyway they have around also homes that uh, have gone through certain tragedies say for example uh, you know people have killed each other there uh, there's been murders in that house so they kind of hover around that house and that's why when you see these homes yes there is tragedy there is a, a lot of psychological ill health in that house but if they don't move on from what they've gone through they don't uh, heal themselves into good health these beings will stick around and whether you like it or not uh, it is going to give the effect of gloominess and a, a sense of darkness around that home and so when you even go past that house you're like you know let's just avoid this road because that house is there so you don't realize it's not just the house but it starts to emanate from the house and people walking by your place will actually sense that there's something not okay plus these uh, uh, these kind of uh, nature spirits this is their food right you got to remember that this grotesque looking uh, being needs that kind of energy to survive in in their level of evolution if there is no uh, energy of this you know decaying flesh and other things they can't survive and so if if there is a home where this is going to be consistent and constant why not stick around yes so um that is uh, one of the uh, one of the nature spirits and then moving on they also talk about um savage oct octopus like monsters right and so these um, these are basically what you and i would call in pranic healing as elementals that uh, gloat over the um, you know when there are people who are completely and fully drunk and have no control of their their movement and what they say and what they do so they love to stay there and of course they enjoy the fumes of alcohol so this is what we call the elementals the naturally occurring nature spirits that exist in this lower part of evolution and they need this kind of energy to survive and so if you're going to be drinking every night and going crazy they'd love to be around you yes and plus if you're carrying that bottle and going around then even more reason to stay by you and so if you're clever and you'll actually see the man walking yes he is uh, all tipsy and walking about the place but around him are these interesting um uh, nature spirits that are enjoying what he is emanating because it's food for them and then to move on um the enti entity poses now this is with tribals right so if you notice a lot of tribals they they start to worship they call them the beings around but they're not really probably because you remember earlier when we were talking about clairvoyance we said that the more um rather the less evolved human race they could be they have clairvoyance all over it's not generic to the eyes for example and so they can sense and they can feel and so these nature spirits is something that they can see and then they they presume uh, that these are holier than thou and they start to worship these beings and so they say that uh, because in the old tribal 
uh, in the old tribal traditions, sacrifice, yes, was something very common. They would sacrifice animals, they would sacrifice all kinds of things, right? And so the sacrifice is what, remember the, the uh, entity we were just talking about earlier, this nature spirit, loves it because there's blood there and there's going to be decaying flesh. So they love to stay around there. So they, they get exactly what they want. There's blood sacrifices are made um, and this is food for them, uh, preferably flesh. And sometimes these are burned because it's part of the sacrifice. They have to burn the sacrifice and very low grade creatures, uh, these that possess etheric bodies. And so what happens is they start to, uh, it's part of the ritual, but it's almost like they, they are, they're offering it to these nature beings on a regular basis and it becomes the entities that they more or less worship. And so you remember the whole Hindi movies where you have the tribal, they'll take you and they're going to burn you. It's, it's not funny, but um, it's actually true because they believe they need to do that. They need to sacrifice a human being for the gods to be happy with them and give them whatever they require, whether it's wealth or uh, just sunshine or maybe rain, whatever they require so they can sustain their life. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, I think that should be yeah. more or less for me. Did you see that? Fairies don't have sense, smell, taste, how do they feel? No, we didn't, I didn't talk about it. All right. What does it say? <laughs> One of the streams of evolving life after the mineral kingdom instead of passing the vegetable kingdom, as you might say. Okay. So they take on an electric vehicle and they get into rocks. So they go from the from deep into the earth, slowly going higher. You know, this could instead be like... going into the plant kingdom. Yeah, instead of going into the plant. So it's like, you know, uh, there are these things about dwarves and those kind of things, small creatures, not people, but they made them into people. Because, but they're like dwarves or something. Like that. And you see Lord of the Rings, the dwarves, they're always in the middle of the uh, mountain or inside the mountain or in a cave or deep, deep into the earth. They're known for that. Yes, yeah, so if you look at uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the Seven Dwarfs are actually in that little place trying to get the diamonds out, right? But they're really tiny beings. There's That's why they call dwarfs. <laughs> right, so. Th there's another meaning to it on the spiritual path, but this yeah. is with reference to the Etheric. story. And then they move on to what? Uh, to become hobbits who live close to the earth. <laughs> what? Yeah, in round houses. Yeah, I mean, it's a figure of speech, but they're like hobbits. So they're evolving. The hobbits are, no, I can't say that because Lord of the Rings, you know, put them together. But, um, and then there's the gnomes, which can be frequencied in caves or mines, become visible either by materializing themselves or by drawing around themselves a wheel of physical matter. Wheel of physical matter, not necessarily. Now, as they evolve, they start extending outwards, right? That's what they're talking about. This is more evolved. At a later yes, step, when yeah. they become a norm, they, they become evolved. They, they detach, from detach the right? They detach. Now, what do they mean by that? They have to still be attached, but they can detach. Always remember, energy is fluidic. And what they do is, physical matter might not be just physical. It could be air. So you might see a form in the air. And you might see a form in the water. You know? So, um, you see these uh, Sinbad uh, cartoon. If you've seen Sinbad in the Seven Seas, the cartoon, uh, these uh, beings are there. You know, they're trying to, they look like water ships and they're trying to um, entice the men and then crash the ship, you know, and mermaids could be actually uh, these norms because they're extensions. So they look at them as a fish coming out of water, but they actually got a shape and a body and everything. Like that. But we're not going to go into detail of all this, yeah? Just to give you an idea, because don't take everything literally. There are no real mermaids. How would they reproduce? I always wondered that when I was a kid. I'm not that much of a kid. They lay eggs or They're gnomes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, they have breasts, but they have nothing else. So, <laughs> why are you laughing? What? I am not laughing. I feel you. <laughs> I'm thinking of, my God, you got into those details. I'm like, okay. It's obvious. Any okay. guy would think about it. Yeah, I'm good. True, I'm not a guy. So. Uh, so they would seen more frequently than they are. No, not rooted in objection. Okay, whatever. So you know, it's very interesting, and I cannot go into too much detail because it's not too relevant. It's to do with healing, 
where some cases, very rare, I must say very rare, so don't create cases now, okay? There are some cases where there are uh, beings attached to rocks, nature spirits on the grass, those kind of things. And then some certain children disturb them or kick them by mistake, but they get very bugged. And so sometimes these type of kids, uh, and now bear in mind, this is just not as uh, common, yeah, uh, because uh, there's not that much grass and stuff around anymore, but, uh, and you have to have really uh, bad luck to go to that place okay, where the person's there and you can't see. Uh, but uh, uh, the person, like there was one case, two cases where uh, the first case was, um, another case, you remember the case with the, when we were the Acharya and the uh, kid was getting the fever at the same time, mm. every day, around six o'clock and no other uh, issue. Yeah. You want it? Oh yeah, okay. And I heard about it. Yes, I, I won't go into too much detail about it. I was there, sorry. I was there, right? We did the healing. Anyway, so, um, so this one, they did the heal, nothing worked. And then uh, somehow something looking, and then there was uh, another case where it happened the same thing. And then uh, the healer, the, one of the uh, senior people, one of the masters, they were talking to us about how this uh, girl would keep having a fever every time. And apparently she, they went to the psychic and the psychic said, you disturbed a being, you threw this rock and that was the rock, being's home and stuff like that. And so you have to, um, so then basically what was done is a little bit of psychic self-defense, cutting of cords and a little bit of shielding and healing. And the next day the, it didn't happen. Uh, so then they were fine. But interesting, right? So interesting. Anyway, just uh, knowledge. Some of the lower types of ethic spirits are not pleasing in the aesthetic sense. So these are elementals. Obviously, like I said, don't zoom into them. The more you zoom into them, the more crazy and ugly they look. We've spoken about this, right? I spoke about the camera, even you. Uh, <laughs> look at the camera in the morning. Um, and savage octopus like monsters. This is a big uh, exaggeration. You see, exaggeration. They're only this big usually or this big, depending on the influence they have on the person. How much? Maybe they, they zoom into it, so it looks like. Yeah, it huge. does. It does look very scary if you really, really zoom into it. But then you don't need to really, really zoom into it, right? That's the whole point. But you are much, 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 much bigger compared in your energy compared to the monsters, so-called monsters. So don't worry about it. If you're a healer, there's very easy techniques to get rid of them. Can I add and, something? Yeah. I think also the problem, uh, the probability of zooming is to make uh, a greater diagnosis or understand uh, these creatures yeah. better. So maybe that's why, just like we do with doctors and, you know, the scientists and the technicians in labs, they have to look at the virus or the bacteria, for example, the COVID right now, they have to enlarge it and look at it. So maybe that's why they're talking about it like octopus looking, because at that point they needed to understand what is the elemental of alcohol, for example. Yeah. So probably that's why it said. Yeah, so the application, okay, so that is basically it. They're just basically nature spirits. And I spoke about already the elementals, how you can burn some incense, the shaman techniques, the other techniques. And some of the uh, techniques involve, of course, uh, blood um, to, especially if you want really gross beings, because like attracts like, if you remember, I've said this many times. And so then these beings get attracted to the energy emanating out of this uh, blood and uh, mixture of herbs and blood and certain things. And since they're so gross, they can have a physical effect on someone or they can pretend to be someone and there are methods to communicate with them and those kind of things. Yeah, we should stop. Can I you can answer the questions. Can you there are no questions. Sure. We answered all. Yeah. Any more, qu any questions? Did you guys see Kardec by any chance? X-Men. Yeah, maybe, maybe X-Men. Which X-Men? There's so many X-Men now. The one before, the one after, the one in the middle. <laughs> um, dreams? Hence, people have the experience in dreams as forms can easily be changed. Yeah, Master Chua has written that if you read the book Achieving Oneness with a Higher Soul, it's clearly written what you think is. So if you want the body of Rambo, you can have the body of Rambo. You want body of Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, not now, but earlier, you can have that, right? So whatever you want, you want to have uh, Kim Kardashian's bum, you can get that. Oh, I love Kardec. Cool. It gives you an idea of the seance and stuff like that. Interesting, right? Anyway. Uh, Did you notice in the end, he was yeah. in his astral body and he was observing what's happening at that time? He was basically astral traveling. So he saw at that time what was happening in uh, Belgium. Uh, no, uh, Spain. 
I think it was Spain, yeah, in Spain. And then he got the insight from the other being that, look, the more you, it's like forbidden fruit. The more they were denied, it's good that the books were burned because then everybody wants them, right? Do anyway. the young children naturally? Are most very young children naturally clairvoyant and then goes away? Is there an age up to win? It's not that they're naturally clairvoyant. Uh, they're, you see, one of the biggest issues in clairvoyancy, uh, the amount we can reveal without revealing more, uh, and I've explained this, is that um, you can't use too much will. And you can't use too much will corresponds. Uh, and you can't, uh, you see, clairvoyance is do with sensing sensitivity and you're not supposed to use your brain you're just supposed to watch without thinking right because the moment you think your energy is going somewhere else your intention is going somewhere else and then you're expecting now kids they're very open you know they're very innocent they don't think they're just looking at what's there right and uh, they don't have too much will develop the agnya is not as developed um no, i shouldn't have said that no that's one of the chakras which you don't want to activate too much when you are looking now you want the agne to be smaller during, during the time you're looking. So that is not... Uh, Continue really. quickly. Uh, and so the kids, they don't have developed agnes, which we have spoken about because they keep running around all over the place. So that's why they can see more easily. They can see more easily. And plus they're cleaner also. They don't have mental and emotional garbage like we do, you know, accumulated from work and other stuff. We're talking about kids. So I would say up to the age of seven or eight, they would be able to see until then once history, civics, geography and exams start, then the faculties get muddled because they're thinking too much. <laughs> so until they're in the coloring phase and the fun phase, they can see stuff. But not all kids. Some yeah, kids have not, Agni not all of them. If they um, Agni is all we yeah, there are some schools children are trained. Yes, I know we have spoken about this about the blind school also when we were talking about astral sensing and astral clairvoyance. It was kind of stuff. So we are done. Yeah, I think we'll we'll take a break now because if we start, then there's another yeah. thing that goes into a different part of uh, the chapter. So for now, we'll take a break. Uh, today being Monday, we'll see you on Wednesday, and of course, Friday. as in we'll end, right? Yeah. Yes. We we'll break from the book, but end the session. Yeah, we're going to end the session for now. So let's close our eyes, connect onto the palate, inhale and exhale, relax the body. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokot, Sulat Maha, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, angels and beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the angels and beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's and internet connections. Thank you for sustaining the entire session. We ask you to continue to help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge, to have a deeper and clearer understanding of these various techniques, these uh, amazing priceless teachings being imparted to us today. We ask you to help us use it to become better divine instruments, to help manifest your plan on earth with thanks and in full faith. So be it. We thank you with gratitude, respect, and love. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Atma Namaste. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Yes, and we will see you Wednesday evening. Arhatik Yogi's Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah, bye. See you. You're welcome. Bon appetit, everybody. Thank see you. ya. Ending for all now. Bye.